Aloha, my name is Sarah Snyder, and I am a licensed therapist and registered yoga teacher turned elite embodiment coach. Welcome to a yoga guide for ready-made resolutions in 2023. So um, I want to share with you guys about something that is incredibly powerful and in all of my experience as a licensed therapist, what I know is that so many of us are struggling with anxiety and we're struggling with perfectionism and we're struggling with um, some of us depression, some of us struggling with our mindset. Um, and oftentimes that manifests in so many different ways that impacts our life and it impacts our business and our ability to be successful. And so what I want to share with you today, um, I'm here to talk a little bit about ready-made resolutions. And the most amazing part about um, the eight limbs of yoga, right? So I'm going to be sharing with you about the eight limbs of yoga, which are like literally ready-made resolutions. We're going to be focusing today on the first two limbs of yoga. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about why. Look, like most people abandon their New Year's resolutions after a few days, after a few weeks. Some of you, that may be you already. You had all these resolutions or these intentions, and you're finding that perhaps it's harder than it seems to change habits, right? To change behaviors. And so rather than set re resolutions, which personally I don't believe in, um, I want to invite you to follow the yogic uh, eight limbs of yoga, to follow really this ready-made guide for resolutions for a more meaningful, purposeful, and fulfilling life. And one of the things I want to share with you is um, some of you who have been to a yoga class, you might be familiar with some of the limbs of yoga. Um, Patanjali, who wrote this ancient textbook um, called the, the Yoga Sutras, he basically described the eightfold path, which he calls Ashtanga. Basically what this means, there's eight different limbs. Um, and these eight steps essentially are guidelines on how to live a more meaningful and purposeful life with the ultimate goal of coming back home to ourselves, right? And and so the Yoga Sutras, what I want to share is that yoga itself is this beautiful practice. To yuj is to, to yoke or to unite, right? And so that literally means union. So what we are uniting ultimately is body, mind, and spirit, right? And we do that through the eight limbs of yoga um, because ultimately, again, this guides us back home to ourselves, yeah? So as a therapist and yoga teacher turned elite embodiment coach, I found that my clients can achieve mental health and happiness and success faster when they are given embodiment tools like the eight limbs of yoga. These are a guide to lead you back home to yourself. And so ultimately, that's what elite embodiment is all about, right? It is a homecoming back to your highest and most authentic self. And when you tap into this elite version of you, it allows you to embody the life, the success, and everything you've ever wanted right now without having to numb out, without having to burn out, and without sacrificing yourself in the process of elevating to your next level. So one of the things before I dive into the first two limbs of yoga, I just want to share, you know, part of my experience and my training ultimately. So, you know, I've spent the last four years helping hundreds of clients within my therapy practice, um, <clears throat> and I realized after years of that, my years of training in, in the, the field of mental health, in the field of education. Um, I was also a yoga teacher. I've been um, a psychology teacher for many years and I was also a high school counselor. And what I found is that ultimately my training as a yoga teacher is allowing me to bridge some really unique gaps between the worlds of psychological health and the worlds of physiological health through nervous system optimization. Um, so I've built a really innovative coaching practice as a way to reach more women, right? I'm licensed in Hawaii as a therapist, and that limits me in terms of who I'm able to support. And there are so many women that reach out to me um, to work with me as a therapist and I cannot, I'm, I am booked solid, right? I have had a wait list for like two years. So I, you know, started this coaching practice as a way to reach and teach more women the tools, these yogic tools really that allow us to achieve holistic health. Um, and so ultimately like what my sort of, what I've developed is incredibly innovative and powerful. Um, and ultimately it allows you to neurohack your brain and body for holistic health and healing. And I call this my embodied paradise method, right? 
So I'm really passionate about bringing together these two worlds of mental health and physical wellness to sort of bridge this gap. So my clients are not only operating from a place of authentic self, but really they're able to work smarter, not harder um, by regulating their nervous system to operate at their highest potential without putting in their highest output. Yeah. So I founded the Women's Wellness Circle. It's a Facebook group. You're welcome to join us um, as a way, again, to connect with more women, to hold space. Part of my magic is holding sacred spaces, safe sacred spaces for women. Um, and I founded my life-changing um, program in Emotional Mastery last year because I wanted more women to have these tools. So I'm going to share with you some of these tools today. Um, and I want to invite you, you know, just to, to open yourself to the possibility of this, this approach, which really integrates neuroscience, psychology, and yoga um, as a way to unite body, mind, and spirit, right? As a way for you to tap into your intentions for this new year so that you can experience greater happiness, greater abundance, and greater success in 2023. So let's just dive right in, right? I, I want to tell you more about my embodied paradise method, but I'll, I'll get to that. Um, part of what I want to share is these eight limbs of yoga, right? So we're going to be talking today about the yamas and the niyamas. The yamas are essentially like our external values. They are almost like a moral code of compass, if you will, um, or a moral compass or a moral sort of code of conduct. Yeah. And so I'm going to dive into that a little deeper in a moment. I'm also going to share today about the niyamas, which are personal observances or like our internal values. And as we self-reflect on these, it allows us to sort of shift into a healthier mindset, right? Now you are probably familiar with some of the other limbs of yoga, the asanas, which are the poses, pranayama, which is breathing, breath work, right? And ultimately the breath is absolutely integral in terms of nervous system optimization um, and uniting body, mind, and spirit. But that's like a whole other training, right? Pratyahara is another incredible um, tool. It is one of the limbs of yoga that involves a withdrawal of the senses to turn inward. Um, and I, uh, I'm going to be leading a resolution reboot um, virtual women's retreat, and that is happening in two weeks. Um, I'm co-facilitating that with Dr. Libby Kamkaran, who is another incredible neuro coach. And um, we are going to be actually diving into and experiencing more of these eight limbs of yoga um, through a yoga flow, through an ocean um, sunrise meditation um, on the beach, through uh, restorative yoga, yoga nidra. Yoga nidra and restorative yoga actually allow us to activate pratyahara, to activate this turning inward and withdrawing of the senses so that we can tap into the elite within, right? Um, the last three of the eight limbs of yoga are dharana, which is like immovable concentration, right? It's really sustained attention, as well as dhyana, which you're probably familiar with. That's meditation on the divine. And finally, samadhi. That's like the ultimate goal. That's enlightenment. That's this like blissful experience. By the end of this resolution reboot, you are going to be, if you choose to sign up and, and register with us, you are going to be in a place of samadhi, just total open enlightened bliss. It's really an incredible and powerful experience. So let's talk a little bit about the yamas. Let's talk a little bit about these external values, because ultimately this is really how we treat others. Yeah, this is how we, we want to live our lives in such a way that we are doing no harm. That's ahimsa. That's the first niyama, uh, yama. We want to be truthful. That's satya. That's the second one. We want to live according to asteya, which is non-stealing, right? Being generous with other people, not taking what's not ours. We want to live according to brahmacharya, which is moderation, learning how to be our best self and exercise moderation in all things. And we want to learn a paragraha. We want to live according to non-possessiveness. We want to be able to celebrate others' happiness and success. Part of what I love, you guys, is that I am partnering with another neuro coach. We're not competing. We are absolutely lifting each other up and celebrating each other. And that is what I think this group is all about, Women Helping Women. That is also what I think many of you, you know, if um, why you might be here in this, in this space. And if you're watching this live or catching the replay, right, we are here to support each other as women um, on our entrepreneurial journeys. And it's such a beautiful practice. So um, I'm going to be diving into each of these a little bit deeper. So I want to talk about ahimsa. That's the first yama. And again, 
this is almost like the golden rule, if you will. This is this idea that Ahimsa is guiding us to be more gentle, more compassionate, more loving toward both ourselves and others, as well as our environment, right? Through our words, through our thoughts, through our, our actions. And this can look like a lot of things. This may look like, so for example, being mindful of how and what we're eating um, in order to be non-harming to the environment. This might look like not blaming yourself, not being stuck in that cycle of like negative self-talk where we're blaming ourselves. Um, and we wanna practice this non-harming so that we're being kind to ourselves and to others through our words, through our actions, as well as as I was saying about negative self-talk, we want to consciously reframe that negative self-talk. Conscious reframing is the second piece of my embodied paradise method um, so that we're essentially learning how to stop the self-blaming, stop the self-punishment, and instead learn how to speak to ourselves with radical self-love. And when we treat ourselves with radical self-love, we then can treat others from that place of self-compassion and that place of kindness, right? So a question I'd like to invite you to consider as you set your intentions for 2023, how do you wanna be more loving with yourself? How do you wanna be more kind with yourself and with others in this new year, right? So, Let's now talk about satya. Satya is, again, truthfulness. Um, and what this means is it's really like our sacred oneness. It is our connection to the divine, if you will. And before we can be truthful with others, we have to be truthful with ourselves, right? And so this can look like speaking our truth, speaking what is true for you. This might That can look like a lot of things. Perhaps it's asking your partner for what you've been needing. Perhaps it's asking your boss for a raise, right? Um, holding emotional space for yourself, for others. That is part of truthfulness, being honest in our retelling of stories, being um, following through with commitments that we've made, right? Avoiding gossip, like all of these are satya. That is all part of the second yama of truthfulness. And so a question I'd like to invite you to consider here is how could you be more honest with yourself and with others, whether that's in your life and or in your business? Are you operating from a, from a place of truth, from a place of integrity, or is there something else going on here, right? Um, and what would it look like to live your truth in 2023? You know, I wanna invite you just to reflect on that for a moment. If any of this is resonating as you're watching, please drop in the comments anything that's coming up, anything that stands out for you. Um, and let's move on. Let's talk about the third yama, which is asteya. Asteya is essentially not stealing, not misappropriating what belongs to someone else. So it's like a freedom from craving. It's a freedom from desiring or possessing what belongs to other people. And this looks like being happy with what you have. This looks like being generous with others, being respect, this is a huge one, being respectful of other people's boundaries and property, uh, not being jealous of others. Again, I was talking about this idea of women supporting women, right? Can we show up for each other and respect each other and honor and lift up each other without misappropriating, taking something that's not ours without competing with each other? Can we respect and not misuse our time? So for example, you know, are we on social media during work hours or school hours or whatever it is that we're doing, business hours? Um, is that distracting you from your ultimate goals in your business, right? So Astea is really all about honoring both your own and others' boundaries. And so I want to invite you to just reflect on that question. Um, of how can you honor yourself and honor your your boundaries and other other people's boundaries in this new year in a slightly different way, right? That is a game changer when we learn how to set boundaries with ourselves, whether that is in our relationships, whether that's with technology, whether that is, um, uh, I mean, boundaries show up in so many ways with our family, our friends, right? So so much of what I teach is along the lines of how to develop healthy boundaries, how to develop a healthy mindset so you can learn how to heal from codependency and people pleasing and all of those challenges that so many of my clients struggle with. Um, the fourth yama is what's called brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is uh, essentially self-discipline, self-restraint. This is a really interesting one. Um, in ancient times, this was actually thought to refer in the Yoga Sutras, referring to celibacy, abstaining from sex. But what we 
believe in modern times is that this is more about really like living a life that's pure of our thoughts and intentions and actions so that we can stay focused on living a more peaceful life, right? And so brahmacharya is, I love this one because it really looks like being your best self. It looks like exercising moderation in all things so that you're not overindulging in food, in alcohol, in other substances, in technology. You're not overindulging in sex or gambling or anything that is an addictive craving, right? So it's like brahmacharya is freedom essentially from releasing addictive cravings. And it's, and I'll give you an example. So um, eating to live rather than living to eat, right? Or working to live rather than living to work. How many of you are just like, burning yourself out by overworking, over giving, over extending, over committing yourself. And sometimes we get stuck in that, especially if we're dealing with perfectionism, right? So what would it look like to practice living with greater moderation and greater self-awareness in 2023? If that speaks to you, I invite you to consider working with me in some capacity. That is like my gift of what I teach women how to do is how to create greater balance in their life. Um, finally, the last of the yamas is a paragraha. What that means is non-possessiveness, non-greediness. So the idea is we wanna travel light um, on our spiritual path. We wanna let go of what no longer serves you. And what this means is we want to make space. We want to declutter anything that is holding you down, that's weighting you down so that you can create space in your life and your business for better experiences, better clients, better people to come in that you can ultimately connect with, right? So, um, a paragraha looks like detachment. That's the easiest way to explain it. So again, the idea is that we're releasing beliefs, we're releasing old limiting beliefs or possessions that have been weighting us down, um, people, old, old relationships or people that no longer serve us, old fears, limiting fears, limiting attachments, so that we can release what is not needed anymore, like letting go of whatever you've been holding on to from 2022 and really step into a higher version of yourself, a more elite version of yourself in this new year. But sometimes we have to let go first so that we can rise, right? And so a question I wanna invite you to consider as you set your intentions for 2023, what do you need to let go of to create space for in this new year? What, what people or experiences or beliefs or things do you need to release, right? You may choose to clean out your closet. You may choose to clean out your car. You may let go of some old jewelry or books or anything that that's just been sitting around taking up unnecessary space, whether it's mental space or physical space or even spiritual space, right? So what do you need to let go of? So these are the external values. These are the yamas. That's the first limb of yoga. The second limb of yoga is what are called the niyamas. These are our internal values, essentially how we treat ourselves, And these are Ideally, like what we're creating through the niyamas is self-discipline. It's we're creating self-discipline through cleanliness, which is what's called satcha. That's the first niyama, purity. Um, creating contentment, santosha. Can we be happy with what is? Can we be accepting of what is rather than in this like resistance to ourself, right? Yogis believe that so much of our suffering comes from essentially resisting reality, right? I teach my clients radical acceptance um, in order to achieve santosha or contentment. Um, we want to practice that self-discipline through also what's called the tapas. Tapas is really, it's like fire. It is the fire of transformation. It is the discipline so that we're committing to what's important to us. Um, and then finally, the last two niyamas are this our self-study, which is called svadhyaya, or um, and that, and I love that one. That's all about like being a student of your own experience. And then finally, and this one's a little bit of a mouthful, but it's this idea of self-surrender, which um, the Sanskrit is Ishvara Pranidhana. And the idea is that we're letting go. It's a surrender. It's knowing when to release and let go. So let's go a little bit more into each one. Um, the Niyamas, again, are this guide for like personal discipline um, as a way to how we wanna treat ourselves, right? So these were perfect, ready-made resolutions for you in this new year. I mean, ultimately I'm saying in the new year, you guys, but, but really what that means is these are resolutions for the whole year. These are, these are daily resolutions that we want to really try to 
follow as a lifestyle change, not just like a resolution for the new year, right? But the new year is a great time to reflect on these. So <clears throat> ultimately, with according to the first Niyama, we want to strive to live from a place of salcha, from purity, right? We want to remove the layers of the past so that we can clean the slate and we can be in the present moment, right? So salcha looks like cleansing your physical body. That could be a detox, right? That could also just look like maintaining good hygiene, taking a shower, you know, allowing yourself to take care of yourself, to purify your diet, um, to clear your mind of negative self-talk, right, or negative motives, or whatever is feeling unhealthy for you. Again, it's like this decluttering. So here we are again with this idea of releasing what no longer serves us. Um, and again, I love this because when our outer environment is clear, our internal environment is peaceful. And same is true when our internal environment is decluttered, our external environment generally reflects that, right? So all, all both of those contribute to mental health. Um, and so a question for you to consider in this, in 2023, as you set your intentions is what needs purification in your life? What needs some cleaning out, right? Um, the second of the Niyamas is Santosha. That's this idea of living from a place of contentment. And we want to practice in order to achieve that. We want to practice self-observation as well as self-acceptance so that we can be content with who we are and what we what we have, right? So some of us are seeing, you know, maybe business coaches posting about how much money they're making, or we're seeing people, you know, with all of this supposed success. And what is that doing to your self esteem, right? So can you detach from these ideas and these stories that you've created, so that you can have faith that what is happening is for your highest good? Can you have faith that um, as an objective witness of your experiences that you can essentially detach from these ideas, these stories that you've been telling yourself. And can you move through the world seeking contentment from the inside out rather than starting externally, right? So that's what elite embodiment is all about. It's not about the fancy car or about the big mansion or about all these things. It's about creating your own personal paradise internally, your own internal sanctuary, right? That's the first pillar of my embodied paradise method is creating your own personal paradise. Um, and I teach a lot of tools for how to achieve that. And so a question I want to invite you to consider as you're setting your intentions, according to Santosha, is how can you practice greater detachment? How can you practice greater contentment and gratitude for what is in 2023? That's a really big question. That question alone will guide you to greater mental health and wellness. Um, the next one, though, is really powerful. It's called tapas. That's the third niyama. And according to this Niyama, we want to strive to live um, from a place of like fire, from heat, from self-discipline. And what this means is tapas is like allowing us to commit to what's important, to burn off our impurities through discipline in body, mind, and spirit, and through our actions ultimately, so that we can move through the fire of our own inner transformation. How many of you have been feeling that. I don't know about you guys, but like Mer Mercury retrograde has been really intense. There's been a lot burning off, um, releasing, moving through a lot of fire. And so I'll give you another example of tapas. If you've ever sweat through a difficult yoga class, right? Or sat through a really restless meditation or you've experienced tapas perhaps um, in all kinds of different ways, again, whether that be physically or mentally. So exercise is a form of tapas because we're burning off impurities, but one workout alone is not going to transform your body. You have to be consistent. You have to be disciplined, right? The same is true in our businesses. The same is true in our life. So we have to remain persistent. We have to remain present and we have to be disciplined in our practice to transform our mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and financial health. Tapas is really like building character through willpower. Um, so a question I'd like to invite you to consider is what do you want to pursue with a fiery passion with tapas in this new year, right? And finally, so we've, we're on the last two niyamas. The fourth niyama is, is really self-study. It's called svadhyaya. And the idea is that we are a student of our own experience so that we can better understand ourselves and our purpose. So svadhyaya allows us to nurture the light within ourselves through self-study, through self-inquiry, right? So that we're curious about what's happening internally so that we can draw out the best within us, the elite within. And this may take the form of being a lifelong learner, right? That's why if you're 
you're watching this live, you likely are a lifelong learner. You're wanting to, you know, um, elevate yourself to new levels. Um, it might look like meditating. It might look like repeating affirmations or mantras, um, reading sacred texts, working with a therapist or working with a coach, right? And gathering perhaps with conscious companies that, that elevates you. So surrounding yourself with others that really support you in um, diving deeper into your own self-awareness, right? So a question I want to invite you to consider is how do you want to make time to know yourself better in this new year, right? How are you going to create space so that you can practice self-inquiry and self-study in this new year? And then finally, the last niyama is Ishvara Pranidhana, self-surrender. That is this idea that we're living with devotion. We are living with devotion to the divine that exists within ourselves, whatever that means for you. Devotion to the divine can look like a lot of different things, but the idea is that we're surrendering to all the twists and turns that life throws at us, right? So that we can go with the flow, so that we can surrender. So this can look like seeing the divine in every living creature. That can look like being humble and gracious and respectful, um, approaching challenges, from a place of a playful trial and error, right? How much of your business is like learning through trial and error, trying one thing, leaning into failure, embracing mistakes so that we can learn and grow, right? So if you've ever heard the saying, um, let go and let God, what that means is let go and trust, right? Trust that ultimately everything is in divine order. We're shifting our focus from what's out of our control to what's in our control. And so a question I wanna invite you to consider as you set your intentions is, how do you wanna feel more connected to your divine oneness in this new year, your divine purpose in this new year, right? Um, and what would it look like and feel like and be like to embody your highest self, your best elite version of you in 2023? That is what elite embodiment is all about. And that is why I wanna invite you to our resolution reboot. Um, you know, As you're reflecting on the yamas and the niyamas that I've shared, you may be asking yourself, how can I live a more balanced and truthful and generous and disciplined and detached life, right? What would it look like to experience more purity and contentment and, and self-inquiry and curiosity um, and discipline, right? Or in order to experience more joy and more success in my life and my business. Um, and so this retreat that we're doing is um, it's a one day virtual retreat just for women. It is led by Dr. Libby Kem Karen and myself. Um, both of us are neuro coaches. So you're getting two neuro coaches for the price of one. And Libby is going to be running the first half of the retreat from the UK, right? So you're going to get like three hours of um, total like mindset skill and action from her. And she's really going to be helping you with through her top neuro hacks to reboot your resolutions. And then I'm going to take over at sunrise in Hawaii and we're going to actually do a sunrise guided meditation. Um, it over looking over the ocean and that it's going to be followed by an ocean yoga flow, restorative practice, a yoga nidra practice, um, all of these things, including really, uh, really clear sankalpa or intention setting to help you reset your nervous system so that you are ready for this new year. Um, and I will be diving into the remaining limbs of yoga. We're actually going to be experiencing the remaining limbs of yoga through the retreat. Um, we'll be using and, and practicing the asanas, the poses, pranayama, the breathing techniques. Um, we're gonna be using pratyahara, turning inward, withdrawing from the senses, jhana, concentration, dhyana, meditation, and ultimately you're gonna end up in this blissful state of samadhi where you are creating your own personal paradise. Um, so that you ultimately can tame your brain for elite embodiment, right? So that you can come home to your highest and wisest self. And so imagine that you are going to get three hours of Libby, three hours of this amazing flow coach, um, as well as three hours of mind body transformation with me. Um, and this price that we have is only going to be here. Um, this is our early bird price only through the 18th. So get in now, you guys. This is such an incredible, you're getting six hours of two 
top neuro coaches. So dive into this. You don't want to waste this. If you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one or you want to learn more about my emotional mastery program, reach out and I'm happy to set up a free holistic health audit so that we can check in and I can learn what's working and not working within your mental health and wellness so that I can support you ultimately to step into the elite version of yourself in 2023. So thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear any any comments, anything that resonated, which of the yamas or niyamas are you wanting to work on in 2023? So thank you guys so much for being here. Hope you have a beautiful day. Aloha.